Well, hey, Pipers. Welcome back to the Bass Piper channel. Um, this video today is going to be a little different. This is a, a senior moments video number three. I haven't put a senior moments out in the last couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, I, I was hoping I could do one every Friday, but you know, life don't work out sometimes that way. But this video that I'm going to put out guys, I don't know how long this one's going to be. You may only listen to it five seconds or you may only listen to it five minutes, but it may go 45 minutes or more. Uh, I don't know. Um, but it's something that I want to share with my subscribers and the YTPC community. Uh, this is coming off of Brother Jim Corvette's uh, video that Jim made this morning dealing with uh, the controversy of things that are out here going on, not only within our world, but even with uh, some things within our churches. And if you see my comment that I put on Jim's video, uh, I, was, I told him he was spot on. And Jim, if you see this video, buddy, it's just like I said, you don't have to apologize for anything for speaking the truth. And, uh, you know, no matter our lives or our backgrounds, truth is truth. And uh, lies are lies. Our falsehoods is falsehoods. <laughs> but uh, this one today, guys, is going to be coming from more of a biblical perspective. So... Uh, you know, those that want to just go ahead and tune out now, that's fine. Um, but God has laid something on my heart. The Holy Spirit has uh, to, just to say something about coming off of Jim's stuff. Um, <clears throat> we're living in a day, folks, that I mean, no matter what your religious take is, um, just hear Bass Piper out for a few minutes. Uh, I'm not here to try to shove anything down your throat, okay? I'm just trying to be real with you. Um, we're living in a day of spiritual warfare. I just got finished, finishing up two weeks ago in my church, a 19-month study through the book of Revelation. If you've ever read the book of Revelation, you know that it is a jaw-dropping and eye-opening uh, book in the Bible. Some people find it hard to understand the symbolizations of things that are in there, and they find it hard to read and understand just what they're reading. Um, but a lot of times with that, a good commentary, a good Bible commentary that's made in plain English um, would help you tremendously in understanding some things. But the point that I want to get at today, I'm going to try to get situated here because we may park here for a while, is this. Um, what's going on in our world today and what's going on in our United States and what's going on in the political arena and however you feel about Donald Trump, whether you like him or you don't, um, let me just say for one, from the political arena, it is time for us to put aside our political parties. Whether you're Democrat, whether you're Republican, whether you're independent, whether you're libertarian, whether you're whatever. Uh, I just got something across the screen, so I hope that doesn't, no, okay, hopefully it won't come through. Um, it shouldn't matter. There's an old saying that sometimes enemies come together for a common cause. Well, we're at that common cause and we got to stop being enemies because we need to come together to save America, which in turn saves us. We're in a battle of spiritual warfare. Now, what you see on TV and what you see with people that you say, well, my gosh, how can we do this? What's coming? What's going on with people? It's Satan. Satan is out to destroy everything. 
Now, there are some instances where God allows things to happen, just like God allowed Satan to attack Job in the Bible. Um, you know, he told Satan, here, here's my man. He's a righteous man. You know, you, you know, you can do this. You can do that. You can do this. Test my man, Job, but you're not going to take his life. You can take anything else. And Satan did. And uh, I won't get into all this story there, but you got to realize that people you see in, on TV and people you see out in the street, you see a face. But if you'd peel that face back, you would see a demonic image. Or you, you'd either see the angel of Satan or an angel of God, whichever one the person is under. You're either under the influence of the God of heaven or you're under the influence of the God of this world. It's not rocket science. And so what we're seeing here is a major, major spiritual upheaval as well. In, in Matthew 24, Jesus told them even back then, he said, you're going to start seeing the signs. The disciples were asking, how in the world would we know when things are getting close to you coming back, Lord? You return. He said, you'll see the signs. He said, but the time won't be yet, but you'll start seeing the signs. Well, folks, we have been seeing the signs. The signs are here. And uh, we're closer than we've ever been, Base Piper feels in his heart, of the rapture of the church. Uh, Christ is coming back. No man knows the hour. The Bible teaches that. People might say, well, now we've heard that for years, Bass Piper, yada, 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 yada. Yeah, that's a bunch of bull. That's a bunch of garbage. That's a bunch of that. No, it's not. You see, you got to realize, too, in the Bible that Jesus also said that, uh, uh, you know, uh, a day is like a thousand years. A thousand years is like a day to Christ. So if you believe that, you know, somewhere around 2,000 years ago, Christ died on the cross, that's only been two days in his realm been 2,000 years or over 2,000 years for us. So you got to understand, no man knows the hour but, but God, the Father. Jesus sits on the right hand of the Father. Even Jesus doesn't know the time God's going to say, son, go get your church, go get your children. But it's coming close, folks. And, uh, you know, whether we see it in our generation right now or the next one, it's, it's a lot closer than we've ever been. And so when I heard that about Jim's video this morning, you know, it kind of struck me and the Lord just spoke to me, man, you need to put a video out with, with this while it's fresh. But you look at our churches today, I really think we are going to see down the road a turnaround of people within our churches that, that are going to be coming back to true churches. Well, what do you mean about that, Bass Piper? Well, simply this. We've got over the last several, several years, we've had an onslaught of just churches going nuts. They're going insane. I can understand why some people have a hard time going to church and um, not wanting to go to church because Satan has even got into our churches. But you know, that's nothing new either. Because back in Revelation, about chapter 2, chapter 3, you will find that Jesus unfolds for, the Lord unfolds for John as he's been banished to the island of Patmos, as he's sitting there by himself, basically, being <clears throat> banished out of what, of what he was doing and for what he was doing of preaching the word and that type of thing. He was banished. He was sitting there. And think of it as a projector screen. Jesus showed John what the future was going to be. And that's what all of Revelation is basically about. The vision that John got, and he was recording all this, and it was been, had been recorded. And so Jesus showed John the seven churches of Asia. And these seven churches of Asia that were going on, these were actually the future churches in the church age that we are in now called the church age or the day of grace. These seven churches basically reflect what's happening today. He showed John, you know, he showed John Ephesus. He showed John the church at Sardis. 
He showed John Smyrna. He showed John Pergamus or Pergamus, however you want to pronounce it, Thyatira. He showed he showed him uh, uh, Laodicea. He showed him all the seven churches that were out there. And when you look at those seven churches, he showed him the church of Philadelphia. We see what we have today, and there's no wonder if you know the Bible, what you're seeing and why you're seeing it. A lot of your churches are going liberal to the max. As we have liberal radical politics, we've got liberal radical churches out here today. And we've got men behind pulpits that are preaching everything but the word of God. And they're stepping around everything but the word of God. And they're stepping around it because Satan's got a hold of them. Satan's got a hold of these churches. And they're wanting to build a church of numbers. And they end up with a church with some quantity, but they have no quality. I've got people coming to my church right now. I have young people coming to my church right now. They said, preacher, we love your preaching. We love this church the way in which you stand for. We're coming out of liberal churches. I didn't like what was going on in the liberal churches. Even 20-some-year-olds, the Generation Zs and Millennials, they're seeing that a lot of these churches are not what it's made to be. This is not what God intended it to be. It's become nothing but man and Satan building these churches. And they've kicked God out the door a long time ago. God's knocking on the door trying to, hey, yo, you remember me? You gonna let me back in the church? No, but see, Satan and man can grow a church, man. You can grow some numbers. But what have you really got? Well, Jesus told John on Patmos, he said, you're going to have these kinds of churches just in the future. In your last days, you're going to see these churches, your, your Pergamos churches, your Thyatira churches, your Laodicean churches, worldly, compromising, lukewarm churches. They're going to be there. We're allowing more of the world to come in. We're allowing more of the mess to come in. And I'm telling you all this because I got, I'm got. i going to shift it and take you where I want you to go with this in just a minute and see something. Out of the five, seven churches, five were not doing what God warned them to do. And the Bible says he counseled them. Jesus counseled them. He talked to them. He re reprimanded them. Two of them he gave a stamp of approval on. What are you going to have more out here? You're going to have more of the compromising, the worldly churches. You see, the, the worldly compromising, Laodicean, lukewarm churches. Jesus said about Laodicea, I'd rather have you hot or cold. I'd rather have you on fire for me or not. But don't ride the fence and be lukewarm. You make me want to puke. Church at Ephesus lost its first love. Sardis was looked at as a dead church. Pergamus was, I believe, the worldly church. Thyatira was a compromising church. I may have those two backwards, but I think either way, that's what you got. And the fifth church was Laodicea and lukewarm. Okay? The other two, Philadelphia and Smyrna. Philadelphia was the faithful church. Smyrna was the persecuted church. God put his hand of approval on those two churches because one, they were faithful. The other was persecuted for being faithful. So what are you showing us, Bass Piper? I'm showing you the five churches that correlate in any direction and any mix you want. When you have a church that's lost its first love, you're going to see worldliness, lukewarmness, compromisingness. 
and becoming a spiritually dead church. You can have all the ministries, all the junk for the kids, all the romp and stomp little ball things out there. You can have all your Awana clubs. You can have all the fanciest music you want. You can have your rock music, whatever you want, but you're still dead because you're spiritually dead. You see, our eyes think, wow, there's a lot of stuff going on down there. A crowd will draw a crowd. Man, they must have something really happening down there. Yeah, yeah, man and Satan's building that church under the a, a caption of God. I mean, who wouldn't want to go to a more fleshly, worldly, compromising church than a spiritual church? Ain't no fun in a spiritual church. Those people don't know how to have fun. We got to make it fun to bring the generation and the kids in. The only problem is with that with a lot of these preachers is that they'll never, ever preach the word of God because they've brought the people in not preaching the word of God. They've brought the people in by compromising and allowing the worldliness in there and the lukewarmness in there. Because if they do have a change of heart and start preaching the word of God, they're going to lose half the congregation because the congregation was brought in on a falsehood. It was brought in under a Satanistic way. I don't have to pull any punches. I'm going to tell you, Bass Piper's fed up with the mess. If I lose some subscribers, so be it. As most of us say, this is my channel. <laughs> I'm done with Satan. You know, I'm done with trying to don't do this and don't upset this and don't do this and don't say this. No, it's time for us to say it, folks. If you're a Christian and a child of God today and you go to a true blue bona fide church that's standing on the word of God no matter what, we got to speak out. Lay your differences aside of your political, what side you're on. We got to save America and we got to help save ourselves. Jim was talking about these drag queens and all of this stuff signing up at places to for kids to wait. Hey, it's all in our churches. Several years ago, it started with the Catholic Church. You remember the priests, the pedophilia that was going on amongst the priesthoods in the Catholic Church. And then, just a few years, uh, just about a, a year ago, we saw, or several months ago, the Southern Baptist Church. And I'm a pastor of a Southern Baptist Church right now. The convention is exploding, man. A 20-year cover-up in the Southern Baptists over a three, almost a 300-page documentary that was put out and researched with a firm of how many preachers that were sexually abusing their staff some form or fashion had been in some kind of sexual abuse. Big-name, prominent, Preachers that were in this report being caught up with and owning owning uh, spas that they'd bring women in, you know, to help relax the preachers from their stress. All kind of Satan's in everything, man. Now he's attacking the what? The Methodist churches now are having a bad time, aren't they? Some are trying to figure out with, this, with their, their conventions and their conferences what they're going to do. They're the ones that are now blowing up with all of the drag queens and the lesbians and the homosexuals and putting their stamp of approval on all of this and having them brought into the churches and, and, and having them teach the kids. And I, I mean, just nothing but Satanism all in the church. Satan is having a field day, guys. When are we going to wake up? But in these cases, everything rises and falls on the leadership of those churches. If you're in churches that are like that, don't walk out, run. And I'll add another step further. The church needs to come together and get those leaders out of the church. 
But see, there's no wonder what Satan's devising. Look at what's going on in the churches. Well, look at what's going on in our world and our politics in our United States. They don't want to educate your children no more. They want to indoctrinate your children. They're going after, the regime is going after changing all America of how you know it. And we can't keep sitting here with a finger up our nose and one in our ear and just sit there and go, well, I just don't know what we're going to do. I don't know what to do. They're not having any problem doing what they need to do. And those that support that kind of regime ain't having any problem telling you stuff. The, are the gays or the lesbians or the transgenders or the queers or the whatever that's out there with the LGBTQ, XYZ, ABC, whatever, one, two, three, whatever they want to keep adding to it. Not even, even added incest to it. Those that have sex with their stepmoms and stepdads, the blended families that are having sex. Stepdads with daughters and, you know, stepmoms with, 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 with stepsons and whatever else they want to put in there. The place is blowing up, man. It's blowing up. And... Um, We've got to do something about this. And one of the main things we can start doing is God might be allowing a lot of this to happen. You go, well, my goodness, you, you just said it was from Satan. It is. But God might be trying to wake us up, folks, and get back to God. We were a nation founded on God and Christian principles. But what have we done? We have pushed God slam out of our United States. And we're bringing the God of this world more and more into it. And God's trying to tell us something here, folks in America. You better turn your mess around. You better get your life straight. Bass Piper's sitting here telling you from a preacher's angle, the Bible has a lot more to say about hell than it does heaven. Hell is real, guys, and so is heaven. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. So, Jim, if you're still watching this video, buddy, don't ever apologize for standing for right, man. I, I know what you meant in your video. I got you. But we need more of us to stand for the truth. We're all not perfect. We don't believe in sinless perfection. We'll only be perfect when the Bible says we'll get our glorified bodies one day. But those seven churches, uh, those seven, you do the statistics, five bad, two good. And see, as Bass Piper was showing you, when you lose your first love and you take your focus off of Christ, everything else is going to fall in place. Because you can't have one without the other. If you're a lukewarm church or going to a lukewarm church or you're a worldly church, you've done taken your eyes off of Christ. If you've taken your eyes off of Christ, you become a lukewarm worldly uh, church. You become a dead church spiritually. Look at the other two, Philadelphia and Smyrna. Persecuted and faithful. If you are a faithful church, you're going to be suffering persecution today. If you're a church that's suffering persecution, pretty much bet you're a faithful church. You see how they go together? Faithful, persecution. Persecution, faithful. You see how the other five go together? A train wreck. seven churches of Asia, the seven churches of the church age. I really think we're going to see, and I hope, this is just my belly button opinion, guys, but I really hope, and I think we're going to see before the Lord comes back, I think out of these five churches, we're going to see a lot of people start coming back to the two the faithful 
and the persecuted churches. Because they're coming after the church, they've already started. Years ago, we thought maybe, you know, the martyrs of the church, well, they were over in the foreign fields of Africa. They were out there in some, you know, country, third world country, man, that they're having the sacrifice. You know, we're here in the United States. Everything's cool. Everything's laid back. We got it made. No, you don't. Not anymore. It's knocking on the door. It's right here. In fact, they're not even work, worrying about ringing your doorbell. They're just going to go ahead and bust it down. What are you going to do then? What are you going to do like the young girl that died in the Columbine shootings many years ago, several years ago, probably 20 years ago now, how time flies. And she looked down the barrel of an AK-47 or whatever that young man was holding in her face, telling her to, de to denounce God, her God, and she refused. And he basically blew her brains out. And she went on to heaven. How many of us are going to be like Peter? I'll never deny you, Lord. And Jesus said, yeah, you will. No, I won't. Oh, yeah, you will. Lord, I will not. Peter, you will. You know, Peter was forgetting. Uh, I made you. I created you. I know your thoughts, Peter. Peter, you, you, this is what you're going to do. Did Peter deny Christ? Yes, he did. How many times did he deny Christ? What Jesus told him? Three times. And when he heard the cock crow, the Bible says, the rooster crowed, said Peter wept. We're in some trying days, YTPC. And uh, I'm kind of like Jim. I try to keep politics and religion out of my stuff for the most part. But there's times, being a child of God, I've got to say something. I don't, you know, I don't mean to upset anybody. But folks, truth is truth. And we've got to start taking a stand. And let me say this and encourage some of you. If you used to go to church and you haven't been to church in several, several, several years, I pray that God will help you find a good church to get into. I tell you, I was impressed by a man that I talked to uh, this week. His two girls... A couple of weeks ago, his daughter came and visited with us. She's about 20-some years old. Last week, she brought her sister and brought her mother. Now, they've been going to another church. I get a call on my phone at the, my, in my church office, pastor's office. I didn't get it till the next day. He said, I, this is... So-and-so, he said, I'd like to know what version of the Bible you preach. And I said, hey, well, okay. Well, that sometimes can either go good or bad, depending on who the one on the other end is asking or where they're at. And I didn't know who it was at first. And then when I called him back and talked to him, I realized this was the father of the two girls that were coming and his wife that came last Sunday. And I told him, I said, well, I preach out of the King James Version Bible for my public ministry. I said, there's other good, you know, versions that I might use as commentaries and things of that nature. But, and I said, you know, in churches, you'll have people sitting out there with different versions of the Bible. I said, but for myself, I said, I preach King James, or I'll even preach New King James, which the only difference in those two is they take the these and the thous out of things. But, um, he said, well, I'm glad. He said, I'm a King James uh, man myself. And he says, I want to know what my daughters were listening to and what they were under. Well, come find out. They go to a church, but the church is kind of more on a liberal stand. And the daughter had expressed that. That's why she liked what happened was going on in our church. And she went back and told her sister and her mom. And then they uh, all three come back and told the dad that I was talking to, you need to come to this church and hear this. 
And that's not to put a feather in base piper's hat. It was a matter of just saying, hey, the word of God is being preached here. We're not getting it where we're at. And that's what I'm afraid we're going to, that's going to happen, which will be a great thing for churches and for me to encourage those that are going to churches. If you're going to a church that's preaching the word of God, they may not have all the bells and whistles because my church don't either. We don't have enough people to have all the bells and whistles. Uh, but God is sending people and we're growing and we're growing slow. We're not growing fast. But I really think if the Lord tarries, we're going to see some of the people going to these five churches going to start turning around and start the light bulbs going to come on and they're going to start coming back to churches, coming back to the roots, coming back to maybe where they were, some of them that are older when they were kids, but they've drifted off into the stuff that looks cool and the lights and actions and camera and the and the dry ice on the stage and the rock concerts and the this and that, that, you know. As I told my church, you know, I, I understand, I don't have no problem with contemporary type music and some of the praise and worship. I do have a little problem with having rock and roll in the sanctuary of the church. And yes, it's called a sanctuary, not a worship center. That's a new age word, too, we want to put on our stuff to make it sound cool. I says, I, you know, I understand rock and roll. I says, I serve a rock and my name's on the roll. My rock is Jesus Christ. My name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm on the roll. But the bottom line is, if you got to use rock and roll to bring kids, if you got to use all kinds of watered down messages and fluff, Anetta, sermons, to the preachers that are out there, this is going to sound hard and this is going to sound direct, but you need to step down and go find another line of work because you are a disgrace to the cause of Christ. Yeah, I said it. You're a disgrace. Because you're not standing by the stuff and you know it. All you're worrying about is building a church, bringing the people in. The more you have, statistically, the more money you got coming into the coffers, which makes your, your check a little fatter. And you can have all kinds of goodies and things that you wouldn't have. Because the day, the more we're getting to the end times, you can mark it down. And I would tell young preacher boys this in a minute. Be prepared to be bivocational. That means be prepared to be able to have a secular job for your check and your, and your benefits and your retirement so that you can pastor a church. Because there are some times in our, in our what before the Lord comes back, we may see a more, and we are seeing this, churches are digressing, they are going down. And a lot of churches can't afford full-time ministers anymore. So you may have to make your money in retirement off of something else so that you can preach because they don't have enough to afford you. Well, Bass Piper, didn't you just say there could be a turnaround? Yeah, there could be, and I hope to God there is. But I, you know, I don't know that. What I do know is we're in the state of apostasy where the people are falling away right now. And that's where a lot of people are at. And Satan has got them away because he's got all this other stuff out there for them to do on Sundays. Sundays just become a regular day. It's like Monday through Saturday. I'm going 33 minutes, guys, so I might be going a few more minutes if you're still with this video. <laughs> I know this ain't a popular one from Bass Piper. You're going to say, my lads, what in the world did... That bass piper putting that tobacco he's smoking these days. No, it's just a time, folks, that we've got to we we've got to see the signs. I mean, it's just like what they're doing to our forty fifth president. It, it's all political. Who would ever have thought this mess would even happen in our United States? But the reason why they're doing it is because they're they're afraid and they're on the run. They're in power right now. 
And in one way, they're on the run. Because I have a feeling if our 45th president becomes our 47th president again, things are going to change drastically that they don't want under the 46th president. And that's why they're trying to do all the damage they can right now. And I'm going to put it out there. You ready? You're sitting down? It all started in 2008 with President Obama. They brought it in. They started it right there. Do you remember the words of him during his campaign? Change is coming. Change. The only problem is, you know, uh, change is coming yeah, for the worse, not for the better. They already had it set. Marxism, all the stuff was coming in, man. I may have mentioned this in my last video. You see, Donald Trump screwed everything up for them. They thought Hillary was going to take over from there, but she got T-boned at the intersection, and that messed them up. Who was the vice president to President Obama? Joe Biden. Look what came in and ran against the president. And I'll put it out there stole the election. It was a setup. Because they were hell-bent. Donald Trump wasn't going back in the White House at no cost, or whatever cost it. And you best, but why do you think the man, since he came down the escalator with his wife, said he was running for president? And one of the first words out of one of the Congresswomen's mouths was, all the man says he was going to run. And I won't use the words, I'll give you the initials. She said, we will impeach the m -er -er if he wins. What have they tried to do to the man? Whether you like him or you don't, what have they tried to do? And most people that I find that don't like him, they just don't like his personality. They don't like his tactlessness. They don't like some of his tweets because he shoots it from the hip and he tells you like it is. I agree, maybe, you know, our 45th president maybe needs to get a little bit more tack in some things, but I can tell you one thing. There ain't a person that I know of that cannot deny the fact that he did not know how to run a country, and we were in the best shape we have ever been in in years, in decades. But the satanic regime that we're seeing clouding our politics, they don't want that for me and you. They don't care about me and you. They care about their power, their party, their regime. The man has been under attack after attack after attack after attack after attack. Now they want to indict him. All a political ploy. What my feelings are on that is, I pray to God that the Democratic Party seals their fate for the next 50 years, that they'll never see the White House again. Because all they're going to do, I pray, is just boost Donald Trump up. And their fate needs to be sealed because this kind of mess right here is all uncalled for. They want a war with us. Don't ever forget that. The Dems want a war with the godly and the conservative American people. All they're doing is, is nudging even more, stabbing you, jabbing you, agitating you some more. I have a feeling if we're not careful, that's where it's coming. We're going to have another Revolutionary War 2.0. If something don't break, but that will be all in the will of God, what God's got planned, because it's all in his plans anyway. But anyway, it's been almost 40 minutes, guys. I, uh, it's a different senior moment. <laughs> and somebody's probably sitting there going, yeah, Lord, he's lost his mind. But um, no, I tell you, these are things to, to teach our grandkids, our children, uh, as granddads and grandmoms and what, whoever's watching my, my channel, whether it be a woman or man. 
And uh, we are at a spiritual warfare, guys. We're at a spiritual warfare. And, uh, you know, it, maybe it's time for some of us to get our hot mess together uh, and get back in church, get repented, you know, get fessed up, confessed, as we say, fessed up. Get fessed up with God so you can now get up and walk clean, walk rededicated. You may have been saved. You may have accepted Christ, but you've been backslidden for so long. You've just out of whack in touch with God that you just need to rededicate your life back over to God and get things right with him. Whatever you do, make sure you're ready. Make sure you're ready to meet God. The Bible simply tells us if we just believe in our heart that Jesus died on that old rugged cross, he died and he was risen, he rose again from dead after three days after death. You believe that and you believe the Bible is God's word, not that it contains God's word, that it is God's word. You believe that truly in your heart that Jesus is what he said he is and who he was. And you confess with your mouth, ask Christ to come into your heart. Pray that God will forgive you of your sins and will save your soul and take you to heaven when you draw your last breath here on earth. It's real simple. It's not hard. The Bible said you can be saved. Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, for whosoever, whosoever, don't matter who you are, what you are, your financial status, from the uttermost to the guttermost, whosoever shall call upon the Lord shall be safe. I hope you will today. And I know this has been a different rant, but I want to come off a little bit of, of Jim. Jim, I know, I know I've taken it in a different direction, buddy, in a lot of ways. But when you started that, th so I said that about the, uh, the, the queers and the movement. Listen, I know it's true, buddy. You know, man, you know, I, people can live like they want to live. I can't control that. All I can do is help you. And here's the thing about all of that. As a Christian, the Bible teaches. We can love the sinner. I can love the queer. I can love the lesbian. I can love the homosexual, the gay. I can love the transgender, but we're not to love their sin. We're not to condone the sin. We are to love the sinner and love them enough to tell them about Jesus Christ. And help them understand it's not a lifestyle. They wasn't born that way. My God don't make no mistakes. If he put plumbing fixtures on you and called you man, and he put plumbing fixtures on you and called you woman, I think he knows the difference in what you were supposed to be. What's happened is, is our society and Satan has warped the brain, and it's a mental thing that people are dealing with today. And they need to hear the truth. Hate the sin, love the sinner. A lot of times our world, what are they trying to do? Turn it around. If you don't like my sin, you don't like us. That church is against homosexuality, no. But here's the thing. You can come to my church all you want to and hear the word of God. But now I'm not going to ordain you as a pastor and a deacon. I'm not going to have you teaching in our churches, in our church. I'm not going to put you in anything of leadership. You can be a pew sitter all you want until you can get that sin in your life turned around and get back on track. Then we can talk about some things. But see, people flare up and ruffle up with that. I want to be able to live like I want and live in my sin and be anything I want to be in the church. And that's what's happening to your worldly compromising churches. They're allowing everything. And the Bible says no, no. And the liberal churches keep saying, 
What's the problem? That was that was back in the day. That was a different culture. That was a different world. That's back in Jesus' day. We're we're 2023, man. We're in a whole new world out here. Jesus said, and I'll leave you with this. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's word and God don't change. We're the ones that keep changing. Remember that. God is immutable. He's unchanging. He never changes. So his word is not old fairy dust. It's not old fuddy-duddy back in the day. It's still today. God said what he meant, and he meant what he said. Man will not be your judge. God the Father will. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Hey, guys, have a great weekend. Bass Piper loves you. And uh, listen, I hope this, you know, <clears throat> we're not trying to offend nobody, but I'm trying to give you some straight truth. And if it helps you, praise the Lord in our senior moments. And to do with it what you will. And uh, after you watch this, if you've made it 45 minutes, you can slice and dice it all you want. But um, I'm just trying to help you. And uh, hopefully help our future as well. But we've got to do something. But so until we meet again, relax, have a pipe, or stogie. <laughs> and don't forget the many blessings that God gives us each and every day. You guys have a good day. We'll talk later. Bye-bye.